Hello and good evening. This is the Meet ETV show. I'm Tafara Gadamu. It's now 40 years since the Lions Club established its office here in Ethiopia. And the club's 11th All-African Conference was held in Addis on the 17th of this month, bringing together a number of members. The club is recognized for its efforts in tackling blindness. What else? My guest tonight, Dr. Tababe Yaman Abraham, is a goodwill ambassador for the Lions uh, Club's International. Welcome to this program. Thank you. It, it's, it's interesting. This is the first time that you are that you, you that you played the host uh, to your club's international conference. Yes, that's true. Uh, previously, only we host the district convention. That's only for four African countries: Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and Ethiopia. Period. Yeah, this uh, African conference is the first time. One because the reason in Ethiopia we have only five clubs. These five clubs were not given the chance to organize such big conference. The previous 10 conferences attended less than 30% of the district governors, plus 150 the maximum registered delegates from all over Africa. Now this 11th one has been assigned to be the biggest one, one by uh, participants, second to bring at least over 60% of the district governors from Anglophone and uh, Francophone countries. The reason is why is the international president of the Lions Club International and the vice president and number of other executive uh, office members will attend this conference. And we take the commitment and uh, we, from the beginning, we show our commitment in terms of program, how we are going to attract all these African delegates to come to Addis Ababa and uh, the Ethiopian Airlines conveniency to fly from all over Africa to Addis Ababa, our conference hall, and the commitment of the Ethiopian government to support this conference from the beginning. So you had 400 plus uh, yes. participants in this conference, mainly from, Af well, from uh, Africa exclusively, but you have also the international participants from uh, elsewhere. Yes, that's true. The African delegates uh, threefold increase the participation, and also 70% of the district governors from all of African countries participate. Apart from that, we had a big delegate from Italy, the Italian Lions, who are working with us on the water project, and delegate from America, Asia, and almost except Australia from all over the world. But the number of delegates coming from African countries is uh, threefold increased. And for the first time, the Francophones and the North Africa participated in this conference. So you, you, you were able to bring together uh, members who wouldn't otherwise... Uh, get together uh, for the last 10 years. This is historical. Even the slogan of the conference, history in making, we prove it to the rest of the world that we did. Because uh, the last one year, we are always in communication with all African uh, governors, alliance governors, the, to convince them to come and to participate in this conference and uh, by explaining to them the program motto, the program details, and at the same time also the simultaneous translation. It has been provided a simultaneous translation for the first time. So uh, what makes, I mean, other than the number of people that you've brought here, what makes it unique? Your commitment in the year 2020, you said you're going to, uh, well, I'm talking from the Ethiopian side. Yeah, okay. You have this commitment to, uh, or vision, to address the problems of blindness. In other words, there would never be blindness by 2020. That's a very ambitious program. Not only ambitious, but this cannot be achieved. Yes, uh, I agree with you one way, but I disagree in another way. Just to come back to the importance of this conference, from the beginning, when they decide to give us this chance, Ethiopia's commitment on the blind, uh, blindness eradication program, especially the Alliance, what we achieved for the last 10 years with five clubs, so tremendous, this experience has been shared with other Alliance clubs. Second, Ethiopia for the first time, Ethiopian Alliance introduced partnership with other uh, organizations, NGOs working in this field. And our partnership with other organizations is so fruitful uh, for the last five, six years, uh, uh, we achieved a lot of uh, achievement. 
And this is uh, one of the reasons why we were given this chance, even though we have only five clubs. And this unique conference, for the first time, the international president of the Lions Club attended, the second vice president, and two uh, board of directors, and two past international presidents, and number of past international directors. This has never been a uh, practice in this for the last 10 years. And apart from that... Could that be a guarantee that you're going to address the problem of blindness by 2020, which is basically next door? Yes, uh, you know, uh, so far we address 7 million people in Ethiopia, 7 million people directly or indirectly uh, getting beneficiary benefits from the Lions Club or, or through our partnership with the Carter Center. As it is known that the Carter Center is implementing this program in the uh, trachoma project area and Ancosar Cares or River Blindness fully, I repeat, fully financially supported by the Lions Club International. Interesting. So, so you, you build makeshift uh, clinics on location and then give the treatment? How do you go about it? <laughs> we uh, actually address this issue from all angles by manpower development. At Alert Hospital, we are training 20 nurses minimum per year. We train for the last four years. This is the fifth year. Even though when this program is going to be completed next year, we assure to the Minister of Health we are going to support another five years this program to continue because we need these people to go to the villages and small cities uh, to provide their service. Apart from that, with Christopher Blind Mission, CBM, we build uh, secondary eye units in Bahardar, Dabrobrahan, Jijiga, and Darbamich. Even recently uh, inaugurated the Jima Eye Hospital, we have a bigger share of collaboration with Christopher Blind Mission. And most of the money came from uh, lines from Europe. And apart from that, we have also ambition now to build another uh, secondary eye unit in Adigrat and uh, to continue also to supporting and strengthening the existing uh, eye departments in different hospitals. Uh, for example, Rasdesta Hospital, recently we renovated the whole department and we are now providing them with the latest equipment for the eye department, such as we did in the, like, the Alert Hospital. By the way, the Alert mm -hmm. Eye Department also built by the Lions, and also the St. Paul's Hospital. This is capacity building. When you go to the field, we do a cataract operation with the help of the Minister of Health and the Regional Health Bureaus. By this year, until this year, we do 6,000 cataract operation. And from this year onwards, we are going to do 10,000 cataract operation. That means every month, it will be an eye camp organized by the Lions Club International. How every do you select month. the locations where you provide your services? That's a very good question. This is one of the biggest achievements of the Lions of Ethiopia. We don't select the area. We work hand with, with hand Minister of Health. The Minister of Health selects the place, provides us with the doctors, and provides us with the facilities. And what do you come with? We come with a medication, per diem for the medical personnel, and the, the rest of it. It's a combination work, and we pay also for the transportation of medical personnel. Mm -hmm. And we support the patient when they are coming for their operation in the specific place. And we do also ad advertisements in the radio, in the newspaper, that also, as you know, in this country, still we are paying even though it's a service organization. And how many people are there waiting for you to, to help them with their blindness or near blindness? Half a million plus? It's over half a million. Those already the backlog of cataracts is over half a million. To make a meaningful change on the cataract problem, it must be done at least 120,000 cataract operation. But now, even though we increase our number by 4,000, uh, the efforts put by all NGOs and Minister of Health might not uh, do more than 35 or 40,000 cataract operation. Must be done something on this area. But another area wh where we are now overwhelmingly satisfied with the trachoma project area. Mm -hmm. The trachoma project area is now with the Carter Center we are doing in the Amhara region. Our vision uh, uh, to expand it to Oromia and uh, to the further to the south northern nationality area and in totally for the coming five years at least 20 million people must be addressed uh, by our uh, project if you do that 
the Lions Club is not only an organization. There are other organizations. They must also, I mean, bringing their effort together. And by the year 2020, at least to reduce trachoma to the level of uh, not a public health uh, problem, less than one per thousand. Through your eye clinics? Not only to the campaign, because trachoma is we do it in the, in the field, because uh, trachoma cannot be done with the operation. It must be distribution of antibiotics, improvement of hygiene, improvement of uh, water supplies. It's a component of safe strategy. How, how would that be possible with the degree of poverty that we find ourselves in in this country? Oh, you know, the problem is uh, if we do some project without uh, the involvement of the public, grassroots level, you will not be successful. But look our success, what we achieved. We are supposed to do only 10,000 latrines in our project area. Only 10,000. What we achieved? 120,000 latrines we did. Why? We explained to the public. The public was a part and parcel of the, the project and they understood the use of these latrines improve their life, not only uh, for eradication of trachoma, for other also communicable diseases, and also improve the uh, environmental condition. And the people, they duplicated what we have done uh, by themselves. Even in some Samoradas, in some Kabbalists, the competition was by the latrines. How many latrines have been produced by Kabbalists? And we show them the direction, and now they are doing it. The most important thing when you go to the grassroots level, make them a part and parcel of the project. We are yes. overwhelmed with this uh, result. You have succeeded in doing that? Yes, we succeeded. Now we are succeeding also doing developing the spring waters. We spend only 300,000 euro. We get it from the Christopher Blind Mission to develop, to improve the water supplies in that area. By providing this pure water, we are not only improving the uh, rate of trachoma, but we are at the same time we are solving waterborne diseases. And the public, when they see that their uh, children are not sick by drinking this water and that, they keep it clean. And uh, the education program also is incorporated in the curriculum. And the, in the curriculum, we teach, we have a, a booklet which has been produced, the transmission of trachoma, how to avoid it, hand washing, face washing. This is incorporated in the hygiene education, the, in the syllabus. And our cadres are the, the students. And they go to their uh, home and but the areas and they teach the community. But also the target should be women, right? Girls of course, uh, the disease of trachoma is a woman and uh, a child. And the target also, of course, is them. And also as agents of change. In of course, country. of course, that's beyond our uh, imagination. Most of the changes came to that area through the uh, women. And also we address this issue by uh, recruiting the community health workers, mostly from the women. And also uh, they participate in the distribution of antibiotic, the participation of the health education and so forth. Do you undertake follow-up follow up works like, for example, when you come up with your, with your interventions? Yes. Or is there it a one-time job? No, it's not one-time job. It's a continuation. It's a continuation program. The Carter Center, they implement the project. We, the Alliance, we assess the result and sustainability. The most important is sustainability. And in all areas where we provide uh, pure water, uh, we do it as a participation of the public. And uh, you can go to any of the water uh, boreholes uh, drilled by the lines. Still are functional, even those who are done 10 years ago. They maintain it properly and they follow it because the community is a part and parcel from the beginning. We don't impose the, pro the project on the public. First, we discuss with them the needs and uh, where and uh, how to do it and also how to make it sustainable by, uh, I mean, doing some uh, small amount of payment for the water which is uh, taken by the community, and that small amount of money uh, gathered, they collected, and they use it for uh, maintenance purposes. So, so that's functional, that's what you're functional. saying? Functional. But, but community-owned uh, projects could, could fail easily. I'm thinking in terms of involving the private sector. Have you, have you thought about that? 
involving the private sector into your own projects? Uh, we are, uh, in, by definition, we are private sectors. So all, all of us, we are professional. We do this as, call it as a hobby or as a commitment to the country in our uh, spare time. And but I mean, um, the private sector actually handling these kinds of projects, part private, part public kind of. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about par private-public partnership. Yes. Uh, All of sorts. We have partnership with Carter Center. We pay for that partnership for implementation of some, some sort of, uh, I mean, administration fee, because they don't do it f free for us. Now we are going to start with the World Bank with a graduate led coin, the same thing. But I mean, to have a partnership with a private organization, the administration cost is very high. And you cannot afford to do that. Because the money which is collected by the alliance, either from the members or from the good wishers, this money must be implemented act actively to the project. And uh, we are also ac accountable to the public from where we gather this money at the end of the day. And uh, our partners also, the Minister of Health, look at the now the contract operation we do. Even though we provide all the money, the medicine, the equipment, and everything for that I camp, the Minister of Health, by providing the hospital, they pay for the electricity, they pay for the water, and uh, sometimes even they give us transportation, even though we, we pay for the fuel. But it's a combination. And the work must be done by the Minister of Health. But we are complementing and assisting the Minister of Health to do this job because they don't have the resources to do. This kind of combined work must be expanded in all uh, sphere of the development. As you see, in any given country in the world, without participation of the civic organization, there is not any development because we are the voice of the people. We are addressing some issues which is burning, which cannot be done by the government because of lack of resources and so forth and so forth. We are coming to that picture to do that uh, project and assisting the government agencies and you coll with the collaboration of the government agencies or with other partners, which I already say, Carter Center, CBM, World Vision, and so forth, and we are delivering the, the goods. And the most important thing is not to forget the public. Unless the public is aware what we are doing, without the support of the public, there is no anything can be done. How can the, the public be aware of what you're doing? Because in 40 years, you have only four, five clubs? Yes, that's a very crucial question. You know, uh, not to forget the military regime time. At that time, before uh, 1974, we had 13 clubs in the country, including, you know, I can tell you, Agaro, Jimma. Now, the military government came to the power, they nationalized everything, and most of the people are in the Lions Club, uh, was owning the factories or the small-scale industries and so forth, they left the country. And on, only one club left in Addis Ababa. This club was nearly to close here. Even the Rotary Club has been closed. What is saving us when the drought has been uh, devastating this country? We are able to bring one, this, uh, one aircraft from uh, Sweden, from the, the help of Swede Swedish Lions Club, and you give to the, in, uh, uh, to the government to transport the, the foods to the northern part of Ethiopia. So you prosper like other NGOs on drought and famines in this country? That no, 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 we don't, we, it's not a part of our uh, activity, but we see it, the transportation at that time is very difficult. We want to make uh, an impact on this, to do something. And then you get this plane, and you give to the government, and they allow to continue that club. That is the only club that survives the communist regime. Thanks to the change of the uh, policy in this country after 1992, that we're able to start growing uh, to the five clubs. But even then, it's, uh, you are a club of, uh, this is a club for elites. It's not a club for elites. You have ordinary people. Yes, ordinary people. Uh, let's define it this way. To be a lion, someone must have a money to share his money to the needy. How much? It's not, uh, at least uh, he must pay international and district dues, that's uh, mounting 50 US dollars per year. 
plus a club uh, dues, which might be equal, I mean, uh, to run the club. And plus, on the meetings, he must support his own uh, expenses. But still you are correct. Still, loudly you are correct. Why? Because in Ethiopia, 160 people are there affording this. Can be 10,000 people can do this. There are millionaires and millionaires here in this country. When we ask them what, to join the Lions Club, the first question they are asking us, what is my benefit? They forget that they learn, they go to school, they achieve up to this level through the public participation. The public is paying the tax and you must be able to pay back to the public, at least by doing this kind of small uh, uh, activities. It's not a big activity. In other countries, even they committed uh, this kind of people, hundreds of thousands of uh, birds or the d dollars uh, to support this kind of activity. So where is the problem? Is the it problem is awareness. Problem? Uh, awareness. Uh, sometimes greed. Everybody is asking, what is my share if I become a me member of this organization? This is not a, a formula. We must pay back what we have already taken from the community. We are to some level of uh, uh, achievement in our life. What about the people, the poor of the poorest? Who's going to look after them? The government? There is no way. Forget in Africa. Even in other world, the government cannot address everybody. The people, they must serve. They must organize themselves and go to the community and try to solve the problem. Why we are now organizing the Boy Scouts from the beginning, from the childhood? That they have a sense of community belonging. And unless we do this community belonging and start helping the, the people, first of all, we cannot understand even the scope of the problem in the country. And we'll, we'll go to the negative side. Whenever it's an issue is coming or shortcoming in the political or economical situation in the country, always you go with a negative uh, attitude. So you, if, if you come through this uh, uh, community service, First of all, you start looking at any issue from the positive sides. And you, you try to bring the positive sides more bigger than the negative sides. Nobody can build a country with a negative uh, point. Must, there is a shortcoming everywhere. It is obvious. But how we are going to change this world? Only positively. And if you start do something and commit to do something, and you'll understand also the other part, the difficulty, how to do positive things and to change the community. And we are not only doing a work, we are preparing leaders. The change, you can see it before they become the Alliance member, and after five or six years, people completely change it in their attitude to solve the problem, and also the skill, how to change it. Even simple example I'll give you. This conference, which is just concluded, we didn't hire any professionals. We did it by ourselves. Even some of the people who were participating and uh, helping us, they were wondered how is professionally this, this conference was organized. But people are learning the process in their life. And this experience and learning issue can be implemented in their daily activity day to day activity. And this is also another uh, I mean another part of the issue. Do you have plans to increase the number of clubs in this country? Do you yes. have do you have do you have a timetable? We have a timetable. We even though we uh, we tried in the past uh, to increase it, uh, maybe some of the issues is uh, a bottleneck, like uh, two of the clubs are meeting in the Hitan Sharatan, might be the problem. And now the clubs can meet anywhere. And we translated all the books in Amharic. It has been launched now during the conference. The literature is available in Amharic. We can open it anywhere in the world, I mean, uh, in the country. Now we are uh, going to open one club in Makali. And uh, in very near future, maybe we will open 10 or 15 clubs in Addis Ababa. The community must come forward. Because even out of these five clubs, 60% of the members are foreigners. Whereas the Ethiopians only 40% uh, out of this membership. 
The membership issue is very, very vital, even the point we discussed in the African conference. 18,000 members in Africa for 750 million population. That's impossible to give the service. Africa must awake. The line of Africa must awake. If you want to change this uh, condition, it must be at least 180,000 members to do some tangible uh, service to the community. And uh, this kind of tradition must grow. Unless otherwise, it's impossible. I mean, to wait until the government is doing everything. Can, can the African Union be the way uh, that could perhaps lead to uh, increasing the number of members um, for your clubs? <laughs> the uh, African Union, the civic uh, charter, uh, is similar to the Alliance Club. And we do, part, uh, we do the same thing in part and parcel. Of course, uh, the African Union will be instrumental uh, to increase the membership uh, in African Union because, uh, uh, first of all, role model is very important, these kind of things. People when they see somebody is achieving some level of uh, achievement, they might follow. And uh, sometimes people are not joining this kind of clubs because they have misconceptions, uh, misinformed. And the role of media also is very, very important. And uh, if the media propagate on this kind of uh, civic organization and give uh, a continuous uh, education and information, uh, we can change the community completely. Uh, but for a start, c why don't you seek an observer status within the African Union, like a, a other civic organizations and NGOs? Already we apply for that according to the Charter. We are waiting until it is going to be accepted. Uh, we hope it will be accepted. Uh, that is not only one thing. You know, to change the community or any anything, the information provided is very important. And also the role of the mass media in African countries they must change and they must become friendly to the uh, civic organization like Lions. Uh, just uh, even I provide you the, some information sensation. Uh, look the last week what, what we have done in this country. It's a tremendous job. We are in the prime of news and people are asking from left and right and everybody was uh, concerned about the Lions movement. But uh, unfortunately in this country we do it uh, temporarily for uh, some period of time in the year, but you must have a continuation program. Some program must be dedicated for this kind of uh, activity. And you continuously, if you give the information, if you're not able to change the whole population, at least some, and gradually you can grow. I'm a positive thinker, and I, I always appreciate it, and I know the power of media. The media can change what we are uh, uh, having without media. How many people who can address? Everything is expensive to call a meeting, to address uh, each and every individual, and uh, it's, it takes time also. But media can address one time big number of population and uh, effectively, and can work. Uh, this project can be developed together. Well, you have the opportunity. Thank you very much for Thank coming you to talk to me. It was a pleasure. Thank you.